At Il Gardino, Deacon is surprised when Hope brings up Sheila Carter. She says, I know what you did with her. Deacon looks concerned and asks, you do. As the waiter, played by Lil Nas X, refills their water, Hope clarifies, helping Bill and Ridge send Sheila back to prison. The busboy carrying an armload of breadsticks, played by James Corden, eyeballs them as Hope goes on that it took a lot of bravery to do what Deacon did. We may never have to worry about Shayla Carter ever again. That nine-toed freak is finally behind bars where she should have been to begin with. Deacon says he did it for their family. The waiter takes their order, and the busboy walks past again crunching on a breadstick. Hope continues on to say that it must have been easy for Deacon to have to pretend to be a friend to Sheila when he knows all the horrible things she's done to people they love and care about. She just wishes she could have been there when Sheila's face cracked as she realized no one was on her side. Deacon says it was actually kind of sad. Hope gops, are you serious? Deacon explains that she's only human. He could see that the woman's whole life was shattering right in front of her. Hope calls him a softy and wonders if Sheila felt like she could trust him. In jail, Sheila flashes to Deacon helping Bill and Ridge by keeping her from running. She shakes her head and leans her head against the bars of her cell. F. Forrester, Taylor, and Carter go over Ridge and Bill teaming up to take Sheila down. Taylor has to head over to the design office and is meeting Bill. Carter says Katie's in there and offers to walk over with her. Taylor assures him she can make it on her own. In the design office, Bill tells Katie he wants to see her and asks her for one more chance. Taylor knocks and enters. Bill says he thought they should take a little trip together. Taylor asks, where to? Bill replies, to prison, to see Sheila. Taylor's stunned. In jail, Sheila dreams of slow dancing with Deacon in Il Giardino and smiles. The guard appears and says, you know the drill. Sheila asks, what's happening? The guard says someone wants to see her. In the design office, Bill explains he wants Taylor to have the opportunity to confront Sheila. Katie thinks it's a good idea and tells her she should do it. Bill apologizes for making her think he was blackmailing her. Taylor is the one who is sorry. She never should have done what she did to him. Bill recaps that he struck a deal with the feds, and he wants Taylor to put it out of her mind. Taylor is trying and thanks him. They hug. Bill shoots a look at Katie. Taylor decides that she does have some things to say to Sheila and asks, how soon can we see her? Bill's already made a call and set it up. Katie muses that he has a lot of faith in his powers of persuasion. Taylor goes to wait outside, and Bill puts Katie on notice that he'll be back later. As hard as he worked to put Sheila away, he's going to work even harder to get his family, his Katie, back. Later, Carter joins Katie in the design office and they can noodle and kiss. He mentions Bill being with her earlier. Carter's not surprised as it's no secret he wants her back. Katie asks if that bothers him. Carter thinks it makes sense that he wants his life back. Any man would, he adds. Katie purrs and kisses him. At Il Giardino, Hope is still celebrating Sheila finally being out of their lives for good. She runs down the list of the madwoman's recent transgressions and declares her literally insane. Deacon nods. There is no doubt about it. There is nobody like Sheila Carter. In the interrogation room at the jail, Sheila asks the guard to take her back to her cell when Bill and Taylor walk in. Bill informs her she has no choice and the guard leaves. Sheila chuckles. Isn't this an ironic pairing? The victim and his shooter. In the design office, Katie has told Carter that Bill and Taylor have gone to confront Sheila. Carter muses that she almost lost her daughter and must have a lot to get off her chest. Katie and Carter enthuse about Bill putting Sheila behind bars. Carter asks if what Bill did has changed the way Katie looks at him. At the jail, Sheila wonders if Bill's there to check up on her after her heart attack. She was such a fool to believe he could be kind and compassionate. She truly believed he loved her and she felt seen and accepted. But it was all a scheme to put her back behind bars. Bill smirks that she's not such a fool after all. She's getting it. Sheila declares what he did deplorable. Surely, 
as a psychiatrist, Taylor must see that. Taylor tells Sheila that Deplorable is shooting Steffi and Finn to save herself. Dunning your own son down in an alley. Sheila says it was an accident. Taylor lunges, because you meant to kill my daughter. That's why it was an accident. You almost took both parents from Hayes, someone else you claim to love. But you're only capable of loving yourself. She's only capable of loving others who can help her, until she doesn't. You love to terrify people. It gives you power and makes you feel alive. Because deep down inside, you know you're irrelevant. Thanks to Bill and Ridge, you're going to be locked up here for the rest of your life. You almost took my daughter away from me and everyone who loves her. By God's grace, you didn't do it. I want you to listen to me. From this day forward, your name will never be mentioned again. And Hayes won't even know you existed or walked this earth. The name Sheila Carter will mean nothing to my family and you will be erased from our lives forever.